G'day folks and welcome to my World of Warships training videos. My name is Noppers and I'll be your host for a series of videos designed to demonstrate the first 30 to 60 minutes of gameplay in World of Warships. What's the point of these videos? They're aimed at new players or folks thinking about trying World of Warships out and they're designed to demonstrate the basics of port and battle functionality. There's plenty of other guides and information out there for an in-depth analysis on how to play certain ship classes and so on. My video guides are generic for the newer players as mentioned. Anyway, uh, incoming fire, so that means it's time to get on with it. Hope you enjoy the videos and see you on the high seas. Okay, so as we get into this, I'm going to start by saying I've made a couple of assumptions for everybody. Maybe a little bit dangerous, but we'll see how we go. The first is that you have the game installed, and the second is that you know how to start the game. So here we are on the loading screen in a brand new account for me. It takes me about a minute to go through this loading screen and get into the port, which is kind of like the dashboard for the game. I have a Ryzen 5 3600 processor with an NVIDIA 1060 graphics card. It's a couple of years old there for the graphics card. And my internet is Australian, so you are free to make all sorts of cool jokes there about our internet speed. A minute to load the game isn't too bad though. When we go in, we'll be entering the port screen and arriving first time you'll get a welcome as follows. Welcome Captain. Familiarize yourself with World of Warships by battling against bots. To unlock the next access level, play one battle. Thanks dude, I'll get to that. But first I'm going to open the game settings menu via the cogs in the top left of the port screen. And I'm going to make some adjustments to my settings as I would do with any game that I'm playing for the first time. We start with the graphics tab here and the settings you select will be based on your system. As I said, I have the 1060 graphics card, which is about three years old now I suppose. And I actually have all of the settings to maximum and it runs perfectly. We can then go across to the audio tab and the audio setup is entirely up to you uh, depending on your system. You know, headphone speakers, if it's daytime or nighttime, uh, if you want to knock down some walls or you know, if you play it too loud and the missus is going to kick your butt for having it too loud. I tend to have the general volume low so I can hear mates on Discord and I also sometimes have the in-game music running. You can hear it in the background here now actually, which isn't too bad and adds a bit of atmosphere. There are also a couple of other options here like playing your own music in game, I haven't tried that. And you also have a ship's horn that you can use to blast at your allies when they crash into you. Once we go across to the controls tab here now, the first thing you're going to want to do is look at changing the alternative interface to full. And that gives you lots of information on ships when you look at them. And I also turn off the collision avoidance system because it makes my ship do funny things when I'm near teammates. The terrain hit indicator I'll explain later on, it's useful also though. I recommend just Google all this, Wargaming do a pretty good explanation on their website. The next thing after you save that is go to your crosshair. Now crosshair is pretty important when it comes to selection uh, and on the different battle types. So this orange one for example blinds your eyes. Uh, it's important to have a good crosshair on all of these screens though because it's important for your gunnery so that you are comfortable when you're shooting and aiming. I prefer the star spread one which is this one here. Uh, there we are and it shows extra angles and allows me to better predict ship paths versus gunnery. And a big part of this game is estimating the path and velocity of enemy ships and adjusting your gunnery so that your shells impact more often. Your, your judgment is critical. Good cross here. Once we're complete there we go back to the controls tab, have a look at the settings. Um, we've got battle chat, we can turn that off when we're really pissed off with the human race and we just don't want to deal with them. Um, then also look at the controls, I'm scrolling through that now. There are actually some key bindings here that veteran players don't even realize exist. Yes, I only just realized the other day that the H key and the B key actually do something. So uh, a little bit embarrassed by only just finding that out in the last week or so after so many years of playing. Go in there and have a look. You'll be surprised what you find. So the next bit we are going to go on with is to have a look at the three ships we have available to us and some of their details. And just quickly on detail, you can see Wargaming have actually done a pretty good job of detailing the ships in the game. Okay. On the far right of the screen though are the ship's parameters and you can click on each drop tab and look at the information listed. The information includes hovering out of any individual item to get a more detailed panel. So for example with the main battery guns you can hover over that and get information such as range, reload time and so on on that tab. It's important because for old people like me I don't have to memorize this data now. It's always available to access here or in battle via that cool H key I found. Now. After recording this video, I realized that I needed to demonstrate the click and view function there, where you click on things and it takes you to them on the ship. So I've spliced in my sexy Scharnhorst video. You can see that when I click on the main battery, it jumps from turret to turret. And if I click on the secondary armament, it jumps around looking at those turrets too. It's a useful tool to have. 
back to the tier 1 ship now and looking through the rest of the data we can see information on any aircraft defence. Looking at the location on the ship where this is and you can see near the radio mast these two drum machine guns, they look like Lewis guns, uh, that's some of your AA, as well as the one in front of the bridge behind a bamboo screen I'm guessing. Can you imagine standing there shooting at planes who are shooting all sorts of things at you? Yeah, hell no. Anyway, the AA has a firing range as do the secondaries, but you don't get to physically aim or shoot them, they're mostly automatic. Alright, uh, speed there, maneuverability, and then concealment is one of the most important attributes. It's your detectability range. This is before and after you shoot. It's very important for smaller ships when you are taking incoming fire and you need to get out of sight before it hurts. So stepping back for a moment, this is the Hashidate, sorry if I say that wrong, it's the Japanese Tier 1 ship. And the next ship is the Erie, which is the American Tier 1. There are differences between these ships. For example, the turrets are different and they have different ranges and firepower. And then of course the other one there is the Tier 1 German ship, the Hermelin. The Airy seems to have the largest guns at this tier, so I'm going to actually work the American Tech Tree and take the Airy out for a spin. But first, a quick hover around the rest of the port screen now. You can see as I hover over various parts that information windows pop up. The recruiting station, as an example, let me recruit this account from my man account of Noppers. Hooray, I recruited someone, I guess. Up the top you can see the battle types, co-op in this case, and the battle button in the middle. For profile, you can see it's a brand new account. There's no achievements that have been achieved. Well done. Also a summary page. Uh, there's not a single battle being fought on this account yet. Now back outside and on the top right there, there's the doubloons and credits. That's currency. We'll talk about that later. Top left of the screen has an actual port setting where you can select a different port to look at. So I'm going to select Sarashima Base. I think it's pronounced that way. And I've picked that new port now and we can look at it. The final thing I'll mention is the N or November key, which allows us to sound the ship's horn that I mentioned earlier. But for now, let's get into a co-op battle and my first battle on this new account in the US Tier 1 cruiser Erie. So off we go to the battle loading screen. It displays how many players are within your play range and also how many ships are waiting in queue. There is a caveat listed that tells you that there is no wait over 30 seconds, but this only applies to certain battle types. You can see that there are three cruisers in queue, so what that means is that when we go into battle, because it's co-op, if there are not enough players for the battle, there will be bots. You can tell bots by the colon either side of their name, which I'll demonstrate shortly. Because we're getting to the 30 second mark, we will get a battle no matter what, so in we go transitioning to another screen, which means the battle's been found, and we see, when it comes up, four tabs. The first four tabs are Mission, Team Members, Tips and Division. The Mission tab is the first one, it's just your map and mission info. The second tab is Team Members, it shows our team on the left, enemy team on the right, and as we can see there, colon either side means that they're bots. The third tab is the tips area. You should go in here and click through and have a look at these tips. They're quite useful. The last tab is divisions. You can form little groups within your battle. Okay, we're up to the last five seconds. The battle's about to start. I'll let old mate say it. Yeah, he took his time and we'll do a quick run down the screen. Right, bottom right has the map information. Bottom left has the ship information, the H key stuff. Bottom center is information about reload, consumables, ammunition types, so on. Top center is the mission status, including ships alive and time to victory. Top left is ping and frames per second, and then your team list. Top right is the enemy team list. The next important thing is to have a general look around. Do the H key thing for information about your ship. Uh, it shows you that tabulated data so you don't have to memorize it. And now go across to the map and hit the little cog that you can see above it. You'll need to use the Alt key to actually be able to select it. The reason we're opening this is it allows us to adjust information on the map, in particular the circles for gunnery ranges and detection ranges. To adjust the map size, that's just using the plus and minus keys to make it larger or smaller. Righto, it's time to move the ship. We're going to use the W key to increase the ship's tiller through a quarter, half, three quarters and full, and the S key will decrease that incrementally down to full reverse. Opening the map with the M key gives us some situational awareness of what's going on. We are the white arrow. Red are the bad guys, green are the good guys. Don't shoot the green ones. 
selling forward a bit now and we can see that the ship's guns are designated by circles on the screen green and orange that are trying to get to wherever you're looking at the bottom left we can see the guns go green when they're aiming at wherever we are looking and they're orange if they're not in location yet and you can see on the ship itself that the guns are trying to turn to match your viewpoint this is important as you need to understand that guns turn slowly so don't flash your view all over the place because they'll try and track poorly as you hover over targets you'll see this white circle appear it means that they're targeted you can also do this with the x key it allows you to swap targets the targeting is to help your guns range properly now we're tracking this fellow we've got green circles we're guessing his velocity and angle of attack we're aiming and we're going to shoot deliberately miss i can't back that up oh it was just a really bad shot there uh, we're going to reload there gun circle screen shooting down range and we've hit him this time note that low trajectory of the rounds it is different for different ships my next salvo is going to intentionally hit my ally the green guy and i'll get a warning you need to be aware of this and be careful because you can be penalized heavily for team damage and killing other things to note here if you're wondering how i zoomed in it's the shift key you can also use the mouse wheel and also look at the timer down the bottom for the gun reload that's important to note on big ships especially because they can reload 30 seconds or more sometimes now we're moving on to the next ship which you may not have known was there now this is a situational awareness thing that you have to pay particular attention to uh, when you're zoomed in with the shift key you can lose sight of what's going on around you so as this guy passes down our starboard side our guns turn to track him but they track slowly to keep up we can turn the ship using either the q and e keys which allow us to adjust the rudder half or full left or right as you'll see at the bottom of the center of the screen or the a and d keys for manual steering press and hold to turn now there's another important learning point here is that we just set fire to him that was that fire ribbon that came up on the right with high explosive or he rounds this means he will have damage over time tick due to fires until he repairs them you can see in the top right of the screen where it's ticking over uh, that's not me shooting that's the damage i'm doing to him from fire unfortunately he didn't burn out so we are going to pop some rounds into him and finish him off while we were doing all of that i'll again draw your attention to situational awareness so busy were we with killing that guy you probably didn't look to see where anyone else was don't worry it happens and it's hard to avoid but it is a critical skill to develop as it turns out there are some less than shiny ships on low hit points we can shoot at so we'll give them a few rounds and get a quick kill but when we get this kill we just suddenly realize there's an island nearby and we're going to have to turn to try and avoid that island as you can see there's an orange warning bar that comes up telling us we'll crash on the current course so we keep turning and that orange bar will eventually go away as we turn though some of our guns are going to be facing a completely different direction to the enemy we were looking at but there is a closer ship to our north that's bashing one of our allies so we need to help out there except that i was looking at those other ships and therefore my turrets turned too far and I have a long slow turret turn to get them back this is probably one of the most important aspects of this game understanding your turret traverse time for each ship and making sure that you drive your ship in such a way as to maximize the amount of time that you can get a full broadside away my first rounds here will manage to get a fire on to him which is nice and we would get a damage tip except he repaired it one more salvo down range and then we're going to hold our fire to allow our mate there to pass through and therefore avoid a team kill penalty because I probably would have killed him if I did. And then another couple of salvos downrange there and we will manage to get ourselves a second kill. As we know, because we haven't lost situational awareness, the enemy is over that way. Instead of having the guns turn all the way around, as we said before, we're going to turn the ship because the ship will turn much quicker than the turrets and it will bring the full broadside to bear against the nearest enemy a lot quicker than if I was trying to turn those turrets all the way around by themselves. Now, we're going to ignore the fact on this first salvo that I can't seem to shoot straight, but we did manage to get the gun, the turrets around, and we're going to smash this target. Uh, fit him pretty well, we'll just watch our mate sailing through there. And on this salvo, it's all look a nice fire. 
and it's all about hammering this one ship to reduce the enemy count. What I'm trying to say there is it's about reducing the number of guns the enemy has to reduce the total damage incoming. In other words, less firepower from the enemy team. So this guy, bam, we hit him. Everybody else has a go at him as well, and he's gone, and that's another ship down. We'll keep working our way along and give this final ship now the coup de grace. And in the words of the late Bill Paxton, game over, man, game over. It's now time to see what we actually got for that battle. We got the ship experience, 413, which then unlocks the next ship, the Chester. We've got a victory screen here, which tells us about our personal score. And then on the team score tab, we can see that we were the top ship in the team. Well done, me. And we go to the detailed report, and that gives us a breakdown of stuff such as how many shots were fired versus how many hit. Okay, the gunnery was a bit average. Uh, we know that. The uh, damage to enemy, then the potential damage, which is how much damage you could have taken. And then the unsporting conduct bit down the bottom. That's where we shot our mates. My bad. Then if we go across to the credits and XP tab, it's what we got versus what we would have got if we had a premium account. Now premium is important because it gives you bonuses and Wargaming actually give away a bit of premium, so that's good news. Access level two unlocked. Now you can research, enhance and purchase new ships. To unlock the next access level, play two battles. Thanks, Mr. Wargaming Guy. There's a lot going on right now, so just quickly, bottom right, notifications under that I button there. You can see ship added. Go over to the left, you can see the Diana L in gold writing. That's a premium ship. Normally you buy them with doubloons, which is the real money currency that you buy for in-game. At the top right there, you can see it. Uh, we got the Diana free. Okay, we go to the modules tab under the battle up the top there. We can see the Chester and the ship XP of 410. So that means we've got enough to buy the Chester right now. So we click on the Chester, we click Research, we research it for 350. And then when we go to the next page, it says without slot, leave that because we've got nine slots. So we just purchase it with credits, which is the in-game currency. So now we own ourselves a nice shiny new ship and the modules are still open on the left. So hover over each of them and you can have a look at actually what they're about. It explains them all and then just some general information about the Chester. If you hover over the Chester itself, it shows you some things there. I also need to point out that we received some premium because of that battle. Just have a look up the top left there. Okay, let's have a look at this Chester thing. It looks like the bloody Titanic, but hopefully it won't be as unlucky. If we open the artillery tab, we can see it has 127 mil guns, and we go back to the Airy, and it has 152 mil guns, which doesn't make any sense when you think about it because we upgraded to tier two, didn't we? But the guns are a little bit different on this for starters, uh, the positions of them. So there's one at the front, one on the side, one at the back, and then one on the other side. So hang on a minute, that means only three guns at any given time are going to be able to shoot. Whereas the area, as you can see, has the four guns on turrets and they can pivot to either side of the ship. So the chest is still looking worse. So what is it about the chest? Well, first of all, look at the hit points. Massive amount of hit points compared to the airy. That's a start. The armor layout, if you look at the banding there, there's a couple of strong bands, but they're low and segregated, whereas the chest has got that big chunk on the side. That's pretty useful to us as well. We can also talk about ship maneuverability and concealment, but they're about the same between these two ships, so there's not really much going on there. The real change here is looking at the modules tab and understanding what upgrades are available for the Chester. Remember the Airy has no upgrades available. If you look at the Chester's modules you'll see that you can upgrade the guns to the same as the Airy in size, meaning that you get the same good guns but now with more hit points and with more armour, win-win. And that ladies and gentlemen is the end of the first training video. I hope you managed to get something useful out of it. It was designed, as I said before, as the first, say, 20 minutes of your World of Warships account was what this video was all about. So I hope I have demonstrated that for you well enough. What I'm leaving you with here is some co-op play with the Scharnhorst, a German tier seven battleship. 
I love this ship, it's such a good fun ship to play. You can see I'm going up against the Bismarck there and I can just whip around, guns blazing and oh look at that, I've got a few torpedoes, might as well give him a couple. Anyway folks, thanks for watching, I look forward to hearing comments from you and see you in the next video.